Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is Communion Sunday, Sunday, uh, February 7th. So as part of our service today, we'll be celebrating communion. You're welcome if you're a Rosemont person to pick up the elements uh, down at the Performing Arts Center after the service. So I was thinking of that poem by Emily Dickinson. You may have heard of it, Hope is the thing with feathers. Let me read it for you. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And it goes on. Today, we're going to think about that familiar scripture that those who wait upon the Lord uh, shall mount up with wings like eagles. So I think those two metaphors are getting mixed around in my mind, that idea of hope as that soft thing with feathers perching in the soul and hope in the Lord that gives us power to rise. So our call to worship comes from the first part of that passage, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 26. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to live in. It is he who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely have they been planted, scarcely have they been sown, scarcely has their stock taken root in the earth. But he merely blows on them, and they wither, and the storm carries them away like rubble. To whom then will you compare me, that I would be his equal, says the Holy One? Raise your eyes on high, and see who has created these stars, the one who brings out their multitude by number. He calls them all by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his power. Not one of them is missing. Let us worship the Lord. Our first hymn is the God of Abraham praise. Guide us, O God, 
by your word and the Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, and in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So our scripture reading picks up from Isaiah 40, verses 27 to 31. Why do you say, Jacob, and you assert, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and the justice due me escapes the notice of my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives strength to the weary, and to the one who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. So the late Peter Marshall was an eloquent speaker and for several years he served as chaplain of the U.S. Senate. And he loved to tell this story. It's called The Keeper of the Spring about a quiet forest dweller who lived high above an Austrian village along the eastern slope of the Alps. He said, the old gentleman had been hired many years ago by a young town councilman to clear the debris away from the pools of water up in the mountain crevices that fed the spring flowing through their town. With faithful, silent regularity, he patrolled the hills, he removed the leaves and the branches, he wiped away the silt that would otherwise have choked and contaminated the fresh flow of water. The village soon became a popular attraction for vacationers. Graceful swans floated along the crystal clear spring and the mill wheels of various businesses located near the water turned day and night. Farmlands were irrigated and the views from the restaurants was picturesque. Years passed and one evening the town council met for its meeting and they reviewed the budget and one man his eye caught the salary figure being paid the obscure keeper of the spring. Said the keeper of the purse, who is the old man? Why do we keep him on year after year? No one ever sees him for all we know. The strange ranger of the hills is doing us no good. He isn't necessary any longer. By a unanimous vote, they dispensed with the man's services. For several weeks, nothing changed. But by early autumn, the trees began to shed their leaves. Small branches snapped off and fell into pools, hindering the rushing flow of sparkling water. One afternoon, someone noticed a slight yellowish brown tint to the spring. A few days later, the water was darker. Within another week, slimy film covered section of water along the banks and a foul odor was detected. The mill wheels moved, moved more slowly some ground to a halt, swans left, as did tourists. Clammy fingers of disease and sickness reached deeply into the village. Quickly, the embarrassed town council called a special meeting. Realizing their error in judgment, they rehired the old keeper of the spring. And within a few weeks, the veritable river of life began to clear up. The wheels started to turn and new life returned to the hamlet in the Alps. Keeper of the spring, keeping things clear on the inside, remembering the value of hoping and waiting on the Lord. This is what this passage is about today from Isaiah chapter 40. So the first point we can pull out of our passage is that we should know this, that God has not forgotten us and is not too weak to help us. In the context of the passage this morning, Israel was weary, their faith was draining, they hadn't been keeping up on the spring. See, another nation had invaded them and taken over and they began to think, maybe God abandoned us. Or maybe the gods of our enemies are more powerful than ours. Maybe God doesn't see us, hasn't noticed us. 
I mean, we understand their questions. There are moments when we look around our world, when there's war and injustice and pain and suffering, and we say, is God really in charge here? Should we be looking for plan B? And into that, God speaks through the prophet Isaiah. Have you not heard? In the beginning in verse 21, this is what I've been revealing from the beginning. I have a view of all the dealings of the earth, just in case you think I'm just a God over this one thing or this other area. Think about times when you've been on a plane or up high on a mountain and you look down into the valley. And what is it that inevitably people say? The people down there look like ants. Verse 22, it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. So they look like little grasshoppers hopping around. And then it says the rulers of the earth, scarcely have they been planted and a storm carries them away like stubble. Basically, why would you try to gain their power or favor? God can blow on them and they are gone. So he's saying, don't trust the rulers of this earth. They will always be new rulers. Their armies will come and go. But then he contrasts his own army. Verse 26, raise your eyes on high and see who has created the stars. So he compares the stars to the army of the Lord, that God calls them out like a general, lines them up, knows the names of the stars. So the whole universe is under his command. So he says, remember, your creator, he's also the sustainer, and he, all our human rulers and leaders and helpers are like little grasshoppers in comparison to the God Almighty. So then he goes on. The next point we want to bring up is that although we might be like a grasshopper in power, seeming small, God can make us like an eagle. God wants us to know that we are not despised, but beloved. And when we find ourselves weak and confused and weary, we can know that it's God's design not to terrify us, not to forget us, not to let us be weary and languishing, but he wants to renew us. They who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now, renew, it has a special meaning when it comes to birds. And there is a bird in the later part of the passage. They will mount up with wings like eagles. When a bird is renewed, it means it grows a new feather in replace of an old feather. Now, I had a parrot for 20 years. He, you know, he died a couple years ago, and he was my little buddy. Um, but often with pet birds, um, you don't want to let them fly around the house because they fly into windows and they fly out the door and they, they can hurt themselves. So you have to train them to let you clip their flight feathers. Um, those flight feathers are the ones at the very end of their wing that come stick out really long. They enable them to fly. And in my particular bird, they were a certain dark green color. So I, uh, I, they taught me in the pet store which ones they were when they came in. I would have to clip them off. Starting from the time he was a baby, uh, we would trim them. But here's the thing with flight feathers on a bird. Every year the old ones fall out and new ones grow in. So we would have to be watchful of our little bird to make sure that um, when those new ones grew in, we didn't let them like fly all over. We would go take care of them. So those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall grow new feathers. They shall grow feathers of flight. So what it's saying is that when we wait on the Lord, we're re renewed in our ability not to just be bound to the ground, not to just keep seeing things from the same perspective, not to be weary, but to be able to fly, to renew strength, to grow those feathers that enable us to have strength and perspective beyond what we had before. It says even youths and young men will grow weary and will faint. And today is Super Bowl Sunday. And we think of all those men who will play football today they're the best of the best, the strongest, the fastest, the most fierce. And what this is saying is even the best of the best among us, even the ones we look up to whose strength seems endless, their strength has an end when compared to the Lord. 
we rely on just what people can give us, it fades. So it says, remember to rely on the Lord. Those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength, will renew their strength. So what does it mean? How do we practically wait for the Lord? Well, earlier in the passage, there was a, an observation that what the people had been doing was complaining about God. So I would say waiting on the Lord is putting aside complaining about God and instead confessing or rehearsing the truth about God, talking to God rather than just talking bad about him. Think about when we complain for a moment. Usually when we complain, we presume that we know everything about a situation and we cast ourselves in the victim role, right? Um, so for example, if our friend was supposed to be picking us up to take us somewhere and they're really late, we start complaining, oh, I must not be a priority to you because you left me sitting here for so long. Grumble, grumble, grumble. When we may find out later, that wasn't the case at all. There was something else going on. And so it tells us, instead of doing that, putting ourselves in a place where we complain about God's handling of the world, instead rehearse, remember the promises of God, that he loves us, that he will strengthen us. So wait for the Lord. Hope in the Lord means we study God's promises and hold on to them every day. You know, there's some in the Bible that are our favorite. Um, Romans 8, 31, what shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Ephesians 2, 8, by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So instead of complaining about God, we rely on the love and the promises of God. And we invite the Holy Spirit to write those words upon our hearts, to keep our hearts soft toward the working of God. Because sometimes the Lord's timing is different than ours. God sees that big picture and how everything on this earth connects. And he's not slow as some feel that he is slow, but he has patience. God doesn't lose heart and he is hopeful about the future. <laughs> He's hopeful about his people. So be careful about the conclusions we draw when we see difficult situations in the world and circumstances facing ourselves. Trust that the Bible is right when it tells us that God determines good for us and God is on our side. So, um, Sarah Heinrich says, hope is a way of imagining God's future and persevering in faith that it will arrive. And then with uh, waiting on the Lord, we also remember if we fail, we keep coming back to the Lord, that there's not any failures too big, that God doesn't take us back home. So we think about our failures and our mistakes and are they the most important things about us? No, they aren't. The fact that we love God and are called by God is the most important thing. We still belong to God. Two of sacraments in the Christian faith are baptism and then communion. Baptism beginning our journey with God and communion, which is refreshment and help along the way. Somehow we believe that in this sacrament, Jesus Christ is present with us as we remember the story of God in the world and the coming of Jesus Christ. So Christ is present in a unique way as we celebrate the sacrament, here to refresh you, forgive you, and strengthen you for the journey ahead. As we come to the table, it reminds us of the story of where we are going, that we are going with hope, and we are going with the power of God, and that God is with us. So we'll sing a song in preparation on eagle's wings.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God, our creator. God, you sit above the circle of the earth and you, creator God, stretched out the heavens and spread a curtain in the world, making it suitable for our habitation. When we wandered from your ways, you sent prophets to call us back to your love and guidance. In the fullness of time, you stepped down from the heavenly places by sending Jesus Christ, the unique only begotten son, to call us back to your heart, to show us your ways, to reconcile us to you to one another and to your, your creation by his work of proclamation, healing, of suffering, of dying, of rising again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As you have called us back to hope, we speak to our souls. Hope in God. Wait on the Lord for his promises to be fulfilled. And Lord, we lay before you our concerns for this world, for the nations of the world, that there might be peace and justice, for wisdom for world leaders, for provision for the hungry, for healing of the sick, that you might comfort the grieving, for an end to this global pandemic. And we pray as Christ taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. God, you raise Jesus from death and you raise us also to live new life with him in the power of the Holy Spirit. Will you send us out to be disciples as he commanded? Remembering all of your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Christ Jesus. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. Amen. The body of Christ has been broken for you. The blood of Christ has been shed for you, that your sins may be forgiven. Okay. 
Now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary, and the depths of his understanding cannot be measured. Therefore, may the everlasting, strong Lord whom you serve give you strength where you are weary, hope where you are weak, and endurance so that by faith you may rise up with wings as eagles. Amen.